Taking a little moment. Oh yeah, there it goes. Okay. Hello. Hey everybody. Happy time zones. Happy 2 p.m. or whenever. I'm still eating. I got a little sushi from the supermarket. Um, and I had plenty of time, but then I chose a checkout lane with the oldest, slowest lady checking out. Um, so, and I also forgot chopsticks. So that's where I'm at. Uh, are you hearing crackliness? Did you mean Viola? Because that people were saying that they heard a little crackliness in the last stream on Sunday. And I couldn't really hear it. Um... And I don't know why it would be. You hear it too, huh? Yeah, it's crackly? Okay, hold on. Is there a chance it was just the sound of me crunching on, um, Ginger? I also see that, uh, my internet connection is having some trouble. There's some dropping issues. So... That could be anything. Let me, um, how am I going to do this? Give me a second. I'm going to listen to my own mic. And see if I can hear it. See, this is a nightmare because I'm hearing myself, but just a half second But boy, do I not sound any crackliness. Is there a chance that the one set of headphones that all of y'all are sharing uh, has some issues with it? Oh, wait, now you're hearing the crackle? I think you guys are fucking with me. I think y'all are fucking with me. Um, you didn't hear it last time, but now I do. I don't hear it when I listen to my stream, which makes me think that it must be um, a Twitch issue. <laughs> like, when I monitor my own audio, I'm not hearing it. You're defo crackling. And I mean, I'm, I am seeing on my screen that there's uh, some frame rate issues. Not, like, visual, but, like, my, my interface is telling me that the internet connection is wacky. <sighs> so if it's coming and going, then that means it's definitely not my on my end, because all my shit is not changing. Um... So if you're suggesting to me that it's coming in and out, I think it has something to do with Twitch or the internet. Well, um, there's nothing I can do about that. So I'm just gonna eat a piece of sushi with my fingers. Please don't look at me. Thank you. Intermittent. It's either Twitch or my software. But I didn't hear it when I was listening. Um, so we're just gonna have to- we're just gonna have to power through. I hope it's not horrible. Okay. Um, we're back in- we're 50 days deep into citizen sleep. That almost rhymed and that really startled me. I only heard it when you were listening. What could that mean? What could that be the cause of? That's a real mystery. It's a constant for you just changing in volume. Hmm. 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 Um, well, if it becomes really bad, let me know. Um, I can't do anything about it, <laughs> but I guess it would be good to know. Um, I can't imagine what else it could be. Especially if you, if you only heard it while I was monitoring it, then that means it's not the game. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not surprised if my frames are clunky or chunky. Also, what a fun way of describing that, that phenomenon. Um, my interface is telling me that the um, that I'm dropping a lot of frames. And that is having trouble connecting. Um, and I don't know why. <laughs> Bad Tuesday vibe. That's what I have to say. Alright. Ooh, something's... Tala's ready. We successfully built a still for Tala. And then we gave her some uh, mushroom spores that she could start growing mushrooms that she could then ferment into booze. It's Neovin trying to communicate with me. I wish. Where has Neovin been? That's my question. Ow. Tala comes to you one shift when the bar is empty, tapping you on the shoulder as you clean the bar. It's ready. She's grinning from ear to ear. Can I try? Can I try? 
Obviously. She grabs you by the arm before you can ask anything else and drags you into the back room. The smell hits you immediately when you enter a cocktail of rich fermentation and chemical sharpness. The room is warm and bright now, the newly installed lights making the place look clean, whether it is or not. Tala has already pulled up a couple stools around a metal crate where two glasses with a few fingers of pale girl inside sit waiting. She smiles. I haven't even tried it yet. You can tell she's nervous. You both sit on the makeshift tables, the slight strangeness of the situation making you both jumpy. Tala hands you a glass. Let's get fucked up. It's Tuesday, it's 2 p.m. Let's go for it. Cheers, she says solemnly and knocks the glasses back. You do the same. The first sensation is burning, a sharp, nose-clearing blast of alcohol gross that has your frame querying whether you would like to activate safe mode. You gulp the drink back, and it is only then behind the burn that you taste the earthy tones of the mushrooms, the wood and the soil left behind like sediment. Barely there. That's strong. Nala nods vigorously. Woof, that was heavy. It has promise, though. You think? She swirls the glass around and puts it down. Wait, I have an idea. Tala grabs a metal bottle from the newly installed work surface and adds a few drops of water into the greel. Try again? The time, this time, the burn is a warm glow, harsh but faded, and the woodiness less heavy. You taste something floral in amongst the marshy decay, <laughs> something fresh and bright that you never expected to find. Both you and Tala meet eyes. It's really good, right? It is. Tala grins with her whole face, and that makes you smile too. Tala pours out some more girl and then adds some more water. The action's already taking on the quality of a ritual. You both drink. Tala tucks her feet up beneath her on the stool, folding her legs. She looks down into the glass and swirls the liquid thoughtfully. It's growing on me. Tala laughs. Go steady. We need to save some for the serving in the bar. She smiles. Thanks for the backup. You clink the glasses together. Tala looks up at nothing in particular. My father opened this place, you know. She says out of nowhere, a thought suddenly becoming words. It was his attempt at making a life for us, for my family, when we got to the eye. Your family? My father, my mother, my little brother. She takes a drink. They aren't around now. Ooh. I mean, aren't around. I'm gonna assume that that means dead. I'm sorry. That's okay. My parents had long lives, and my brother is somewhere in the Starward belt. Okay, at least he's not dead. Probably. Ran off with a salvage crew. She puts her glass down. He's alive, as far as I know. Hey! I was just thinking about something my father told me. When he first set this place up, he wanted to call it the Bantian, but he was afraid it scared off the customers, so he kind of translated it. Hence, the Overlook. Ooh. And these past few cycles when I've been here, I've been thinking that I should rename the place. She looks at you. The Bantian. What do you think? I love it. She looks away. Me too. Well, then do it. Tala picks up her glass. Then it's settled in. To the Bantian. She, you both clink your glasses and drink up. Tala hisses through her teeth. Still harsh, she laughs and suddenly grabs her shoulder. Oh, sleeper, I totally forgot. She stumbles to her feet. I hope she's going to give me some meat or something. <laughs> some scrap, some cash. She lurches over to a corner of the room covered with a plastic sheet and whips it off like a magician performing a trick. Beneath it is a neat little kitchen, a sink, a work surface, and a compact oven with a hob. Your kitchen! My kitchen? <laughs> My kitchen? I know I did a cooking stream, but I don't know if I'm ready for a full kitchen. She doesn't give you time to respond. You can come make stuff here anytime, as long as you promise not to raid the mushroom farm. I need those girls. I was thinking, too, that if things picked up, we can start serving proper fruit food at the Overlook. I mean, the Batean. She smiles. Do you like it? It's perfect. Tala gives you a hug, then quickly stands back. I'm sorry, I'm just I'm so glad you're here. It's okay, Tala. You can hug me. Me too. As Tala tidies away the glasses, you inspect the kitchen, checking that it all works. It's small and salvaged, but after what you've been what you've had to put up with, it feels like a dream come true. Later, when she's done for the day, Tala comes back through the bar and you share a glass of the good girl, the one she didn't distill, mean, and that this time you talk about nothing in particular, sharing stories about regulars or discussing the best place to eat on the eye, which, after everything that has happened, feels like a nice change of pace. When it comes time to leave, you promise to cook for Tala and agree to let her know which shifts you'll be working in the coming cycles, and then slip out of the cool of the rotund. At this moment, you feel at once at home. Ooh, got upgrade point. Uh, we've only got one, so can't really... Well, yeah, I don't think I can spend it on anything right now. What would a hug feel like to a robot? Uh, that's a good question. I think it would... 
I have to assume it would be programmed to think it was nice, right? Like in the same way that food feels good. Okay. Not gonna work on this. I should play the GBA game on stream. I would I don't think that's ever gonna happen. I'm gonna I'm gonna level with you, Dusty. I don't think that's in the cards for this stream. Man, I keep seeing Animorph stuff kick off on Twitter. Ow. Which is nice. Animorphs is great. God, we only have two ticks left on this. Shit. Shit. Oh, I remember I lost ticks on this last time because I fucked up. Um... Okay. I should be able to get this next time. I actually might use this last dice on this one as well. <laughs> oh yeah, I got a streaming VOD channel and I've got a video essay channel and I've got a TikTok. I've been very prolific and I'm very tired. <laughs> um, if you're a Patreon subscriber, the Patreon video is coming. Uh, I ran into this issue where I recorded the video and it was great. And I felt really good about it and I went to edit it and the video quality was all shot to shit. And I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, I didn't change anything in my settings, but the video quality was um, just borderline unwatchable. So I had to re-record it. And then when I was trying to edit it, uh, Premiere crashed and I lost a bunch of edits. So it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. Uh... All right, so this is the last, how many ticks do I have to complete this one? I think I have more ticks on this one. Yeah, I have twice as many ticks to complete this one. I also have a lot of, a lot of stuff. Uh, okay, so I can need to convince a crew to do this tug escort. Um, that's not too many ticks. Can sabotage, sabotage sensors. That's also not too many ticks. None of these are a lot of ticks, but I think I need to do a lot of them, which is the problem. Slice thrusters. The tugs have a powerful suite of ion thrusters for rapid maneuvering. If you can sneak in and slice them off, you'll have a significant upgrade for the briar. Well, that's fun. That is fun. An engineering can potentially get me some scrip. Uh, but I think I'm not going to do any of these. You're just going to have to hold tight for one day while I help Bliss. Uh, and then we have this green way that we unlocked. Oh, wow. That greel really filled up my energy meter. I hadn't even noticed. Ha, ah, I'm also too old for TikTok. Um, but actually, I really like it. I don't know. There was definitely a time where I felt I was too old for Instagram. And then I just went for it. And it was pretty nice. TikTok is, like, kind of viscerally overwhelming. <laughs> um, but it's also pretty fascinating. There's a lot of really interesting stuff out there. I think when you first join TikTok, you get served so much weird fetish stuff. Maybe this was just my experience. You get served so much fucking weird ass fetish shit. Some of it explicitly fetish and some just that you're supposed to know is fetishy. Uh, I could accelerate the growth on this. And that could potentially cost me energy, but that's actually not a bad, well, it's only gonna tick down one more time. Oh, but it could be finished right now. Hmm. I'm not gonna use my dice for that anyway. No, that'll happen naturally, and and my dice are hard to come by. I'm gonna I'm gonna help Bliss one more time, and then hope we can finish off the Bliss thing tomorrow. Ow. Oh. Mm. Yeah, we'll, we'll 
definitely the safe option. Yeah, Quan Fog, I actually also follow somebody. I, I follow some people on like Instagram, on Twitter, who um, have just like sacrificed their TikTok algorithms to give us good content. Um, and it's always fascinating. Humans love to fuck. It's just always interesting to see the ways in which they find, find ways of doing it. It's kind of beautiful. Everybody wants to find a new way of connecting with people. I didn't, did I feed the stray this morning? Where did I start? I must have, because I feed it every morning and I didn't start in my room. Yeah, all right. All right, this is the last piece of sushi that I'm gonna for, thrust into my mouth with my fingers. Oh. All right. So this game is a cyberpunk anti-capitalist game where, um, let me show you my character, actually. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'll show you in a moment. A rapid burst of movement catches your attention. A drone, its fins adjusting as it hovers in place, floats in the corridor. I think I've seen this drone on some Citizen Sleeper, like, art, like official art. And so I'm wondering if we're not about to get a drone friend. A drone, it's fin, uh, hovers in place. Hello? The drone shifts a little, but does not respond. The drone buzzes closer, and a voice gurgles out of its speaker. Distorted and strange, sleeper, come to the cordon. We need to speak. Who is this? The drone clicks and roars, and the recording starts playing again. Sleeper, come to the cordon. We need to speak. I want, I want this drone. You move closer, and the drone bobs away to a safe distance. But as it does, you see the HA of Haven Age emblazed on the side. Could this be Fang's drone? Satisfied it has delivered its message, the drone rotates and accelerates away as rapidly as it arrives. You stare at it as it disappears from sight, hoping for some insight that escapes you. To the cordon, then. Oh, I have so many other things I need to do, though. <laughs> um, so here's my character. Uh, our thing is that our, so our character's human body sold like an imprint of their brain to a company and it got implanted in this robot body to work for for that company basically and we decided that sucked so we bailed and um we came to the space station sort of to lie low oh see here's the drone this is what i was thinking of uh we came here to lie low uh, and sort of get our life together uh but we still need food which is what this bottom bar is and we're um we have a condition where our body is decaying as sort of a the, as sort of a corporate safety protocol so that we aren't supposed to escape but uh i've got i've got a source for medicine um and it's really expensive but that's capitalism for you um so we're here just sort of like helping people out uh fang is somebody that we helped out who helped us remove a tracking chip um because the that we were getting tracked by the a company that technically owns this body. I guess I should say legally owns this body. Okay, well this is great. So I can get, I can cook now. I don't have any Matsutake, but I do have some girl. I think I'm good, I'm good food wise, but I'm excited that I can cook for myself now. That's nice. Um, so basically, we're just kind of bopping around this area trying to help, help people. Um, Bliss, the character that we're helping in this screen is named Bliss. And she's trying to get her life together, but she's just like not... <laughs> she's having struggles. Um, but these are dice, so we get as many dice as we have condition. So like, if I don't repair myself, I'll have one fewer dice. And that's bad, because we need those dice to do stuff. Um... And so we can choose which of these dice we have, and the higher the dice number, usually the better the result. Um, so hypothetically, we're gonna complete this bliss action right now, and not a moment too soon. There we go. Oh, and I got some money for it too. Okay. 
The atmosphere in the airlock is euphoric. You and Bliss keep grinning at each other like idiots. Exhausted, blinded, sore and aching idiots. Sleeper, that was incredible! She punches you on the arm. Bliss is a hugger. I never thought we were gonna make it. Those idiots tangled the whole thing up like nothing I've ever seen. You know, we make a good team. Bliss smiles a winning smile. As the lock's inner door clunks open, Moritz gives a rare whoop. Whoop, whoop. He looks exhausted too, and for good reason. Moritz has been the one ferrying tools and parts back and forth from the ship. His tired smile tells you he's glad it's done. Sleeper, Bliss, she, he shakes his head. Impressive. When I saw that ship come in, I thought there was no way. Yeah, same. Why, thank you, Moritz, she winks, for believing in us. Moritz rolls his eyes. You know what I mean. Take the compliment. He shoulders some of the gear that came back in with you and Bliss and heads to the wrecks to stow it. Bliss turns to you. I think you should be the ones to do one to do the honors. She nods to the ragged-looking con console that Moritz assembled. I don't want to jinx it. Yeah, for real, Bliss. She smiles, but you can see she's genuinely nervous. Uh, the other really shouldn't encourage her. <laughs> um, big Infinity Train vibes from Bliss. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, yeah, I can see that actually. I think you see that in some of the some of the general um, character designs. Um, also, as contact for Bliss, this is the third job we've done. I gave her 80 credits, and I know that doesn't seem like a lot because I've got a decent number of credits now, but it was literally all of my money. Uh, I gave it to her to start her business, and the first time, her ex robbed us, and so we didn't get any money, and the second time, they paid us in food. Um, and not this food. This is all stuff I collected. It wasn't even like an in-game thing that I got access to, so I'm really hoping this third one pays off. You glide over to the console and check the screen. It takes a second to see what you're doing through the flickering, cracked display, but after a moment you see the account, and there it is! Almost a thousand cryos sitting in the base transfer account. Well, Bliss calls, have we been screwed again? It's there. Bliss kicks off from the floor and spins up to the base, shouting as she does, whoop whoop! The noise takes Moritz by surprise, and he knocks a rack of parts, scattering handful of metal fittings across the bay. The sight is something, glinting steel, catching the air work lights like glitter. Sorry, says Bliss, gritting when she comes back down. I needed that. She kicks off and joins you to the terminal. Moritz even managed to sell that produce. We made a tiny profit. Eventually, she laughs. Here, she loads a stack of blank chits into the terminal and transfers a chunk of cryo to them. This is your cut. Oh, how much is my cut? Bliss hands you the chits. Thank you for believing in this place. She looks away and smiles. Even when I couldn't. When you first met me, I was on the edge of giving up. All I would have taken was one more push. But now? Now this place is sparkling again. Work is coming up. There are funds in the accounts. Even Moritz has a spring in his step. You both look at him, happily racking up tools. That's because of you, she punches you on the arm. He likes you. He's a good kid. He isn't bad, is he? She leans in close. You know he came here looking to rob the place? I gave him a job instead. Oh, bliss. All right, you're sweet. Don't tell him I told you that. I just thought I might help you understand the kid. Mort's turns to look at you, and both Bliss and you awkwardly wave. <laughs> uh, maybe it's time to change the subject. Uh, what now? From here on, it's gonna be a lot, a little easier. I'm gonna look for some component contracts, stuff that'll keep us inside the bay, but not out in the black. No need to risk our necks if we don't need to. You want to cash out? That's fine. But there will always be a work for you here when you need it. I appreciate it. She smiles and then out of nowhere quickly gives you a hug. She's a hugger. She steps back and glances around reflexively. Take care, she says softly. You too. You turn to leave. And sleeper? Yes. Don't spend it all at once. Bliss. <sighs> so I only got 300 chits? I mean, that's a lot of money. And I didn't have to witness anybody getting murdered to get it. Which is nice. But I put 80 chits up. And then she said we just made a thousand chits and that they sold the produce, so we made a profit off that. I guess. Mm, mm, I don't know about that math. I mean, because a thousand, a thousand plus. Uh, like, let's assume it was a thousand two hundred. Divided up three ways should be 400 caps. I only got 300. And that includes the 80 I put up front. They did give you a cut of the produce raw, though. Ex yes, and that's true, except that the game didn't actually give me an inventory item for that. Like, I didn't, like, I, I didn't have, like, an option to sell that. Like, hypothetically, I got 
resources from that, but I did not in the game actually get resources from it. Which is kind of surprising. It's a weird, it feels like a weird gap. I'm not actually that angry about it. <laughs> yeah, probably like, yeah, materials, time, labor. All right, but we should be able to get some algae. Got goodwill for future resources. You can't eat goodwill. And you can't eat good Willy, because he escaped. Nope, I'm thinking of Free Willy. You can't eat Free Willy. Uh, okay. Do I want to... See, this is... Now this is the problem, is... They need food. They also need... Stuff that's gonna help them escape. Oh! Is this where... Feng potentially is? I mean, I have to go and talk... Ugh. Hey, Mactal. Can you eat at a Goodwill, though? I don't think you can. It's not like Ikea, <laughs> where you can get hot dogs and cinnamon rolls. As you enter the passage that leads through the cordon, a flash of movement catches your eye. The drone. I'm worried this isn't Fang. I'm worried this is Harden, the guy that we helped Fang blackmail um, and uh, take down. And then I'm walking into a trap. I just wanted to put that out there. It stops to make sure you've seen it and then flits into a side passage leading to a set of narrow stairs. You climb up through a dark shaft, the drone stopping at each landing to check you are following. Despite its lack of expression, there's something overbearing about the way the drone waits, impatiently realigning its fins in sequence. Okay, well, drone, come on. After a long climb, you come out onto an observation platform. The cordon and the vast ramshackle refugee ships beyond fill, beyond fill your vision. vision. The scale seems impossible, and immediately you feel small and naive for even thinking you could affect this situation. Something shifts nearby. The drone again? A woman. Whoa! This is a new character. My neck just popped twice when I leaned my head. This is a new character. I'm not familiar with her. Helen? Helene? Helena? Helena? Is that how this name is pronounced with an Ian at the end? Helene? A woman has stood at the window at the edge of your vision. You aren't surprised you didn't notice her. She, too, seems impossibly small in the shadow of the flotilla. The drone buzzes by her shoulder and she turns. Helene? Okay. Neck went awooga! Whoop whoop! That's what my neck did. You didn't hear it when I when I leaned my head. It went whoop whoop! Oh. Sleeper, sorry for all the cloak and dagger nonsense. She nods to the drone. But I've never regretted being cautious. She smiles a tight smile and holds out a hand. I'm Helene. The tight smile holds, but the drone keeps its single eye fixed on you. The effect is a little unnerving. Look. She glances around the empty observation deck as if, as if checking for potential eavesdroppers. Let's be straight with each other. I know about your plans, and she cuts in before you can respond. I understand your motives. You're gonna have to be more specific. You look at her in her overalls, the yellow markers, the H-A sigil. You've been on the eye long enough to recognize the Haven Age member when you see him. Your Haven Age. Yes, I mean, I expect that is obvious. The tight smile again. I hope you won't hold that against me. Maybe. Maybe. She glances around nervously again and moves a little closer. This entire situation, I, I'm not here to defend it. Mm? She glances back at the flotilla. No one is happy about this. Then release the flotilla. She sighs. How do you think this works? Sleeper, tell me something. What does Haven Age mean to you? I guess a work in progress? I guess a work in progress. She smiles. Fair, I think. Haven Age is used to being criticized. In some ways, we invite it. Our members are free to bring up grievances at any meetings, to propose new structures and approaches. She shifts her weight impatiently. As a counselor, it is my duty to listen to them. That's why I was elected by the members. We're an imperfect system, yes, and each counselor, each member, each representative can be flawed, and worse. I'll say. She looks down. But we keep this place running. That's what we do. And the flotilla? She turns and looks out at the clump of fractured ships. The flotilla is a problem. Can the eye take in thousands of refugees safely? I don't know. This place is a ruin, sleeper. What do you think the consul discussed? The price of Garol? We make plans to keep this place spinning, to keep life support working, to ensure... Helene's slate chirps and a grim look passes across her face as she sees the notification. She just got DM'd by a creep she's like oh an, an unmarked image from a stranger uh oh <laughs> she looks tired the screen light casting her rigid expression in a pale glow 
Sleeper, I didn't bring you here to explain how Haven Age works. I came to talk about your plan to cross the cordon, breach the quarantine, and supply the flotilla. She looks directly at you. Stay silent. <laughs> I know you think you're helping the flotilla, but you cannot do this. Right now, halfway across the ring, uh, halfway along the ring, one of the countless series of debates are being held. These debates are to evaluate the potential harm that could be caused if the refugees of the flotilla are left to enter the station. These debates are at a standstill. Helene walks to the window. Too many in the Haven Age Council think of the flotilla as a threat. After recent events, a hardline group has emerged. Protective, selfish. They seek only to benefit the members. In their eye, the flotilla is a danger to life on the eye. If you're caught crossing the cordon and breaching the quarantine, it'll only strengthen the hardline consular's case. Criminals who stole a ship from XPR undermining the security of the station? She shakes her head. It's exactly what they want. The refugees need supplies. They do, and that's exactly what I want to give them. But unless the quarantine is lifted through a fair process, they will never get them. She sighs deeply. Those ex ex XPR spacers you're running with? Sleeper, do you know anything about them? I know they've got a lot of dynamite on their ship. More than I know about you. She looks at you pleadingly. Let's change that, Sleeper. Let's go out. <laughs> Why do you think the refugee flotilla came here now? Something is happening in the system. Something is pushing people out of the colonies and outposts that have survived since Holheim collapse. We need to be ready for whatever is coming. Ready to protect the eye. Oh, the game is gay, for sure. I know the eye means something to you. I know there's a reason you're still here. Help me protect it. Helene fixes you with a strong look. Persuade those spacers that this is the wrong move, that they'll get caught and the flotilla will be locked down. That Haven Age will be delivered into those with the worst instincts. Forget this suicidal supply run with people you barely know. Help me fight for the eye. I mean, so do something to get them supplies. I don't know what you want from me. I'm gonna stay silent. Helene looks at you, hoping for some kind of response. Don't offer up the excuse the hardliners need to lock the flotilla out altogether to persuade the members that they're the safest pair of hands. She looks at you imploringly. Please. You look back at her and the flotilla behind, a sense of desperation in her plea. A notification breaks the silence. Shit. She rapidly scrolls through the pages of data. Sleeper, I need to go. She looks torn. Think about this, please. Talk to the spacers. Help them see reason. And she quickly leaves the observation deck before you have time to respond. You stay for a moment, watching the lights of the tugs and the flotilla, and wonder what it feels like to be on one of those ships, so, so close to your destination and yet so far from it. And then you think of the Haven Age Council members across the eye where the right of, where the right of these people to find safety is being debated. You shiver, and then you two are gone, back into the stairwell and the cold dark below. I mean... I, I think my... I think my my loyalty is into saving the lives of some people because that is a much more immediate concern than the relatively long term concerns of the Haven Age Consul. Um, so, so I don't think I can help her, and if she can't give me some sort of confirmation that she's going to be able to to feed and get water and power so those people don't starve or die of thirst or freeze to death in the the annals of space like i don't think i can help i don't think i can support her all right so the algae growth is ready I mean, I wonder what hap- I do wonder what happens if I simply do nothing. Oh. Oh, I see. So this is just- I assume this is going to continue to tick up even as I- as I, uh, harvest it. Okay, that's good to know. Have you changed it all? Just work stuff. Okay. <laughs> Good. Embrace the nothingness. Embrace the lack of movement and action. Mm. Uh, 
Uh, the XPR people are really sus, though. They really are. That's true. I guess the question is, do I think that they're... Is there a chance that they're not actually going to give the refugees the food and water and energy? <sighs> because, like... Like, that's my number one concern. There are refugees out there, assuming they're telling the truth, I guess. They could just be lying. They could just be lying. Um, I'm going to eat this last piece of ginger and think about it. Ow. They could absolutely just be lying and that all of this food and stuff, they're just going to, like, sell it. Can I talk to them? This is this is an interesting moral conundrum. Cause I know I, I should be more concerned about the long term effects of the eye, but like when it comes down to it, if people are gonna starve to death, you have to let them not starve to death. You have to do something to prevent that. And I realize that might be worse for the eye in the long term. Um but uh, you can't just let thousands of people die. <laughs> I'm taking a hard stance here. I just don't think you can do that. Uh, what what kind of result would that? No, I don't think I want to try that. Um, not our problem now. <laughs> trolley problem. I guess sort of. I don't know. Is this a trolley problem? It's not like, because there's no, the, that Helene, Helene did not properly imply what the stakes are. The stakes are that if we do this, that, um, we're, the, the controlling group of Haven Age will be more controlling, basically, that they're going to be more, um, interventions and like, I, I guess something along those lines, but like, that's not, I don't think that's, I don't think that's, I, I think you have to feed people. Uh, yeah, this is, it has not sufficiently convinced me. All right, what do I want to do? Convince a crew. Sabotage sensors. Um, I have plus two on this and I only had a three die. So let's go ahead and do this one. Oh, only one tick. Positive outcome was only one tick. Damn, I mean, I got some money for it, but damn. Ah, okay, well, good news. I can afford medicine, so I'm gonna get some medicine. Bing! Okay, love that. I got two days left. Yeah, it's gonna be a tight one. <laughs> it's gonna be a tight one, and I'm not gonna be able to work on much else, which is annoying. Let me take my medicine. And a reminder to the chat. Chat, have you taken your medicine today? Have you eaten? Have you drank some water? I got rid of the tracker finally, Wiley. Fucking finally. I managed to get rid of it. I helped Feng. We did the thing. <laughs> good, good sounding off in chat. <laughs> Alright, feed the stray. There you go, kitty. There you go, little cutie. Uh-oh. Mm. Sleeper. Peek is waiting for you when you leave, but they look different. Pale. Drawn out. You need to come up to the briar now. They don't meet your eye. Ugh, what happened? Not here, Peek kisses. Come to the ship. I'll be waiting. Peek walks away. Don't take long. Oh. I hate to see them leave, but I love to see them walk away. And with that, they disappear around the corner, leaving you anxious and confused. Ha <laughs> ha! Nice guild stars. <laughs> <laughs> That's sweet. Okay. No place to buy scrap. I was hoping there would be some scrap spots. Uh, not an ideal loadout. I should eat. I think I'm going to I'm going to try this. Now that I can do now I can make food here. 
Haven't exactly mastered the art of cooking mushrooms, but a couple of handfuls of fried girls always beats expired rations. Tom, 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 tom. Great. That's three energy. Didn't cost me a penny. All right. Things are looking up, you know? Things are really coming together. Oh, that's not what I wanted. I wanted to cross. I got you craving sushi. <laughs> it was really good sushi. So I, I think you should follow your instincts and, and get some good good ass sushi. Get some of that good ass sushi. Okay. Hey, where is um mm. the uh, the thing I was using to do the food thing is gone. Like the the location I was accessing to get peek in them food has disappeared and I, I was only halfway through with it and that makes me nervous and all of these places are, are absent too uh oh uh oh uh oh uh oh oh I'm gonna put more tea on I'll be right back Craven Sushi has such the same vibe as Hero Protagonist, as far as a cyberpunk name goes. Oh. As you walk into the Climbing Briar's cavernous bay, now filled with crates and containers, Eshe is waiting for you. In front of her, sliced open with the inside scattered across the top of a heavy-duty crate, is an object you recognize. Helene's drove. You freeze. Come in, quick. Peek nudges you into the bay, looking behind you before sealing the entryway. We have to start being careful. You move closer to the container, your eyes on the drone splayed out in pieces, some parts of it hooked up to a slate that Peek picks up and begins tip tapping away at, as she looks up from the dissection. We caught it buzzing around nearby, heading for the ship. She leans over and taps the HA sigil on one of the removed pieces of plating. It's a Haven Age spy. We think we got it before it sent data back, but we can't be sure. Peek looks at you nervously. Ha 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 ha. Have you noticed anyone watching you? Any drones like this? Anyone following you up on the briar? I've seen this drone. As she frowns. Following you? I met its owner. As she pauses for a while, peek looking between the two of you. Explain, sleeper. As she says quietly. Uh, tell them about Halloween. I'm not gonna lie. We're just doing this. They need to know. And they need to get their shit together. You explain that you met with Helene on the cordon. And you tell Eshe and Peek about what she told you. That the Haven Age Council are debating lifting the quarantine. But they're blocked by the hardliners. You speak faster and faster. But before you can finish, Eshe walks away in anger. And then comes back, her eyes burning. Are you going to yell at me? If I click continue, Eshe, are you going to yell at me? Because I haven't done anything wrong. I've been working so hard to help you. What is this, sleeper? Have you understood nothing from uh, from what we've told you? She paces in front of you. Haven Age are not your friends. They're administrators, which means they're interested only in their own power, their own survival, their own causes. They divide people as easily as sorting livestock. The great good of their the greater good of their work demands it, and the wider project of the station, the colony, the nation. Her eyes are wide as she speaks, her anger barely contained. Well, I didn't have a choice, so I don't know what you're fucking yelling at me for. Peek cuts in. Listen to them, please, Eshe. They're with us. Peek glances between you two. What was the sleeper supposed to do? They were ambushed by this Helene. I only listened. Tell me... Let me tell you something, sleeper. Okay, Eshe, what? Her rage hardening into pain. When people become administrators, they give up something. Some part of being human, being an equal among others, goes away. They start talking about the greater good, the systems, the way in which their hands are tied or their process is compromised. My mother was an administrator of Hawthorne, and I've seen what it did to her. That noble, higher calling, it is toxic. People should never have the chance to decide the fate of others, and those that do, do so at a cost to their humanity. Peek tries to cut in, but Eshe holds up a hand. Don't stark peak. Don't ask me to be reasonable or calm down. Thousands of people are desperate out there. Being reasonable will only prolong their suffering. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pour my tea and think about how I want to respond to this. I don't want to, I don't want to, here's the thing is I don't want to argue 
I she's never trusted us, and that's fine. Um, uh, I've just given up on Ashe trusting me, and that's fine. But I'm I'm trying to decide because like. I'm not convinced Helene can help, but I'm also not convinced Eshe is right. Uh, and I think they're refusing to engage with an option that could potentially uh, help them a lot and keep them from having to do some bad stuff. Burst into tears as someone is yelling at us. <laughs> uh, I think if I say Helene can help, Eshe is going to get really mad at me, but maybe Pete can smooth things over. Poor Peek. Eshe turns away. I'm done with this. You're risking this entire supply run just by being here. She walks back into the bay and starts checking the straps on the crates. I go next cycle. We don't need you anymore. Get out. Fine. Sleeper. Peek looks torn. You have to understand. This is personal for Eshe. Yeah, that's the problem, my dude. My friend, that is the issue at hand. Uh... Helene warned me. Peak tenses. Warned you about what, sleeper? Getting caught will be bad. You don't think we know that? Peak looks tired. Yeah, it's kind of, I guess, a kind of an undercutting statement. You glance around the Bay of the Briar. The walls seem seeming closer every second. This whole thing is closing in on you, and the question is, where do you want to be when it all collapses? You look at Peak. What do you think, sleeper? Peak rubs her forehead. Should we do this thing or not? <sighs> I don't want to say yes. Ah, uh, do I think they should do this thing? This is so hard. <sighs> um, yeah, I have literally done everything. Like everything that they have is because I have been doing this work, which is so frustrating that Eshe still doesn't trust me. Oh, I just don't know what to do. Um, should we do this thing or not? Listen, my pal, I don't know. <laughs> Peak nods, me neither. They look at Eshe. But you see her, she knows, and she saved my life. So I'm gonna, I'm going to say we do it. They squeeze your shoulder. Onward. They slip away to help Eshe, leaving you alone to replay the conversation in your head. A certain kind of grim determination settling in the room. Last chance to prepare. Well, I can potentially get them this food. Yeah, I should be able to get them this food. If I can get a, if I can reroll the dice and get a better result, I should be able to get them all this food. Yeah, Feng saved my actual butt. My actual, actual metallic butt. And he was successful in ferreting out the worst part. You're leaning against the metal crates you just loaded up with algae, packed and dried into bright green pucks. As she hops into the one beside you, flexing her arching back. Although Fang was arguably acting outside of uh, what he was supposed to for Haven Age. I mean, Fang the individual helped me. Did Haven Age help me through Fang? Uh, you're leaning against the metal crates you just loaded up with algae, packed and dried into bright green pucks. Eshe hops into one beside you, flexing her arching back. I hope the refugees like algae. Eshe squints at you as if you just interrupted her train of thought. It looks like it's a look you've become familiar with. Sorry, I touched my glasses. It doesn't matter either way. This is what we've got, she sighs, rubbing the back of her neck. In these past cycles, working the algae stack with Eshe, you've had little insight into her mind. She rarely seems happy to start a conversation, but is always eager to end one. I mean, can't fault her that. Despite that, you feel like something has grown between you, something like silent trust. <laughs> no. <laughs> the kind that tends to seeds itself in the fertile soil of hard but necessary work. There's something I've been meaning to ask. Eshe raises her head cautiously. Go on. Why escape XPR or why help the flotilla? I mean, why help the flotilla is pretty obvious, because they're going to starve without her. As she pauses, her protective instinct fighting with the trust you've built, you can see her beginning to shrug the question off, but she stops, rethinks, sighs. What do you need to understand, Sleeper, is that Erling's Eye wasn't the only place where Sol the Solheim collapse happened. Sure, Hawthorne, where we grew up, was an XPR installation, but that didn't screen it from Solheim going under. 
Actually, Solheim was the only reason XPR ever were ever there. She pauses, hesitant to get into the whole story, but wanting to offer something. We... She flinches, correcting herself. They're a service corps, you know? You understand? They set up outposts and surrogate systems like this to offer refueling, logistics, and maintain maintenance services to bigger companies with extraction contracts. She gestures to the eye around her, like Solheim. When Solheim went bust, XPR lost their client, and Hawthorne, well, we lost everything. We became an outpost tasked with just holding on. Keep the refueling platform running, they said. Keep the outpost stable. Hold on to our claim. She rubs at her head as if recalling all this was somehow physically painful. Do you know what it's like to spend your entire life in a place with no future? A place that exists only to hold a legal claim to a piece of territory? To sure up breach of contract negotiations between two corporations? It's like living in a, in a, she searches for a word, her eyes jumping back and forth, in a grave. She clenches her hand. So if you're looking for the reason to why, answer to why question, that's your answer. We, Peek and I, know what it's like to be forgotten, to be locked out. She stares hard at the side of the stack, the algae whirling against the glass in beautiful patterns, and doesn't look away. The silence extends, and you realize the conversation is over. Ashley seems angry, but not at you, but with herself, for even voicing such ideas. After a while, you stand and start to load the crates into the powdered cargo trolley that Eshe will run back to the briar. As you do, you try to catch her eye, but she avoids it, soothing herself instead with the comforting simplicity of physical work. All right. Well, I got him food. That's the important part. And I can upgrade one of my skills now to plus two, which is great. Uh, let's see what other... So the other thing that we have not been doing, I think this will, it says there are two ticks left, but I think functionally there are none. Um, so I've got three dice. What can we do here? I'm not going to be able to finish this off before they leave. And that's annoying. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to be able to, f I don't think I'm going to be able to finish any of these. Because I think they all tick up one at a time. This is annoying. This is annoying. Uh, oh, chat, is the crackling in the audio still happening? Because the it looks like my connection is stable now. And if it's not happening anymore, then that might mean that it had to do with with the actually Twitch connection. Okay, so it sounds like it wasn't on my end. You've never heard it? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna assume it's not on my end. I'm gonna assume it's something to do with Twitch and that I'm perfect and nothing has ever gone wrong on this stream. Okay. Um, well, it's like, do, this is tricky because as I understand it, They're gonna leave in one tick, and I cannot possibly fulfill any of the actions. I was hoping this would update to clarify. It's like, do I do I throw three dice at one of these problems and then hope that next day I can use my five die to actually close one of them out? But I don't want to waste my die. If this is not going to be possible. Mm. You think they're on their own from here? Mm. Did I really clear out all these other options? I feel like I had so many... So many quests. I guess I have been very proactive about getting rid of them. Well, I mean, they're not going to succeed if I don't do anything to help them. <laughs> I shouldn't, I should have just let them starve. I shouldn't have gotten them food. <laughs> what a grim fucking statement. I think it's better. Oh, I wish I could fucking save scum. Boy, I wish I could save scum. Hey, Haunter. This game's got me in a real vice. <sighs> I 
I think I'll I think I'll risk the dice. I do think she's just gonna leave tomorrow, so I don't know if I'll ha actually have a chance. But I think it's better to risk it and lose the die than to miss out on the opportunity. Oh, see, I got a little money too. Isn't that nice? Okay. I mean, at least I could, got good dice rolls for all that. I mean, that's something. Listen, it's something. You gotta take every win you can get <laughs> when you're in a cyberpunk hellscape. Uh. Alright, here you go, kitty. Eat up. Eat up, cutie. Okay, are these ships in? Yes, I can get some scrap, I think. Oh, ship mine. I don't need ship mine. Okay. Let's go see if there's anything we can do. If not, then it's time to work on getting Lim and Mina. Okay, okay, I'm glad I risked it. Oh boy, I'm glad I risked it. I can at least get one. Hello. Is it Urker Noodle? <laughs> oh man, Nancy Drew was so fun. Well, thank you. Welcome. Welcome into the live experience. Uh, I really want to do another point and click month. Uh, I think sometime in the summer, maybe? I think I want to do... I think April, I want to do a horror month because I just have a ton of horror games on my back burner that uh, I want to get through. And then I think maybe May. May could be another point and click month. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. I'm also thinking about, so I've never watched Neon Genesis Evangelion, and I keep meaning to sit down and do it, and I haven't had the wherewithal to actually commit, but uh, I think that would be a fun thing to do. Maybe on the Discord? Maybe like a Discord-only stream or something? I'm thinking about it. Oh, Anxious Dope here. Thank you for giving them a diff sub. That gift sub will get you into the Discord, so if you want to come hang out. Only themed months on the Jenna stream. It's kind of nice. I think one of the hard things is knowing what to stream, like what's going to be good to stream and what are people going to like and like how do I decide what the next game I want to stream is. So having a theme just makes it real easy for me. <laughs> you new to the world of video games, really only played Nancy Drew growing up. Excited to branch out. I mean, that Nancy Drew game was so fun. It was extremely good, especially compared to the follow-up, which was Goosebumps, which was terrible, <laughs> which was infuriatingly bad. And I've heard really good things about the other Nancy Drew games, so it, whenever I get around to doing another uh, point-and-click adventure, we're definitely going to do another Nancy Drew. So if you have any recs of really good Nancy Drew games, I'm, I'm open to them. Okay. All right, so we got that one done. Ooh, Peek is waiting for you when you slip out of the operation center, nervously poking at their small slate. Sleeper, they hiss. I followed what you were doing to, on the network. Incredible work. How do you do that? Eh, it just comes naturally. I don't know. I'm like a robot or whatever. I can't tell if that's modesty or just the truth. Interfacing skills like that, it's almost worth being... They stop themselves. Sorry, I didn't mean... Uh, don't worry about it. Peek nods. Sorry. <laughs> you and Peek quietly slip into the main walkway and work your way back to the public area of the cordon. Haven Age has had to quickly respond to the flotilla's arrival, and that means a lot of contractors and spacers walking through these corridors. You blend in easily enough. April Horror is great since it's the sixth month uh, of October. That's a good point. I was just thinking um, April is... What's that phrase? April is the cruelest month. Therefore, it feels like it's right for, for horror games. I can't explain it. I haven't really met a sleeper before, Peek begins. As you might have guessed, they smile nervously. <laughs> so I'm like your first, wow. Althorn is an XPR service outpost, and since the collapse, no one came for refueling or repairs anymore. So my generation has never met anyone outside the company. Whew. We heard about sleepers, they nod in your direction, from the data packets that come through the XPR every once in a while. They usually contain news along with the corporate propaganda, but the reports were light on details. 
Espinarp have kept the sleeper program pretty quiet anyway, and I think XPR are only interested in telling their employees about it because it made living in our company town look like a good life in comparison to being a piece of corporate property. They freeze. Oh, Peek. Sorry. Again, I don't mean they look down. I'm just not sure how to talk about this stuff. Um, you know, Peek, neither do I. <laughs> Peek smiles. Glad I'm not alone. I'll shut up about it for now. Yeah, that, that's okay. You walk on a little further, the walkway becoming busier. You both relax a little more and go with the flow of people. I just wanted to say, I think I understand. They begin again. Clearly, this has been on their mind. I understand the need to escape, to get free of it all. They laugh at themselves. The structure is the system, the company horizons in a company town. They stare ahead. The small places, small corridors, small people, they look away. The slow death it brings. Whew. That's it, they turn to you. I get why you signed up to be a sleeper, and why you escaped from that too. Hmm. Hmm. Is it not as simple as that? I'll just nod. I think that's probably right. You try to form worms, form words, not form words. You try to form words, but you can't. There is altogether too much running through your head. But you look at Peek and they try to look at you and that seems okay for now. <gasps> We're falling in love. You walk in silence again, each of you in their own thoughts, but moving together through space nonetheless. After a while, you come to the entrance to the cordon where handfuls of workers and crews filter in and out through two huge loading bay doors. Peek stops. Okay, they pause. I'm headed back to the briar. So, this is me. <laughs> Once again, incredible work on the sensors. That blind spot you created, that should give us a real advantage. See you soon. They head off, disappearing into the crowd almost immediately, outrunning their own nervousness. Peek's totally got a crush on me. Alright, so I think I can knock out, I should be able to knock out one more of those ticks. Question is which? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm heading back to the briar. Oh, I was actually also going that way. So we're just gonna. Ooh. Uh, okay, so we have this engineering option, which I only have a plus one two, but I've got two sixes. So that's pretty good. Um, somehow I already have one tick on Haven Age suspicion. Um, I think probably from the other thing. So I would need six dice for this. Assuming it all goes well. The other option. Deflecting suspicion, which I'm probably not even going to bother with. Knife snail, thank you, right? The, there were vibes. There were vibes, I swear. Um, this one's only risky, and I have the same amount of bonus. And the worst that could happen is that I'll lose... Cryo. I think that's what that means. This might be the one. Into it. Do I get anything when I into it? Do I get energy? No, I get nothing. Nothing. Well, I think I'm gonna. Uh, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna try for this one. <coughs> we just gotta go for it. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Okay. And let me reroll this last dice. Still a two, huh? Well, that's fine. Neutral. Okay. They're a little suspicious of us, but that's fine. We're halfway through that one. Next round. I think we should have time for it because this will fill up next round but I think that if I remember how it's been working so far that still means that like I'll still have one cycle before they actually leave that's my understanding how that works I'm gonna make myself some food though roast up some girl who wants some oh I made my I made my dad the hello fresh meal kit um, that y'all chose for me, the, the, um, glazed sweet and sour salmon dish with the rice. That was the one that chat voted on <laughs> for me to select. It was so good. And my dad was so impressed. Uh, he said that he thought it was a very luxurious meal. Uh, and I felt really good about it. 
and it was really tasty i should mention it was also really delicious uh it came out really good i've never I, i've never like pan fried fish i don't ever cook with fish i'm from the midwest i don't trust the fish i have access to <laughs> unless it's a catfish pulled from the muddy mississippi um so i don't often cook with fish but this was it was so easy like I just did the damn thing, and I felt so good afterwards. I, it was a nice feeling. It was nice. I don't know. Pan firing fish is best. Yeah. It was really good. I was really, really dubious. Uh, the side for that was um, carrots. Uh, Midwest is the absolute hotspot for fried fish. That's fair. A Sunday fish fry. Absolutely nothing compares. Um, but that doesn't mean I trust it. <gasps> She's gone, sleeper. Peek is breathless and shaking. She started the run without us. Shit. That's a big that's a big thing in this area too. Especially like for churches. Like the church Sunday fish fry is a classic. Let's go. If we head to the cordon now, Peek starts back up the corridor. Oh. Uh Chad, I would love to hear your pan fried salmon trick. This <laughs> fish fryers hate him for this one trick. They turn back. She has to make it sleep or she has to. A shiver runs down your spine. As she, I hope you know what you're doing. I can't believe she left peak. And now they're just here on their own? I mean, they can stay with me. I only have the one bed though. <laughs> so... Um, and it gets really cold in my apartment at night. Oh no. Oh no. Try, fry a slice of lemon with it? What? Like, like just on the pan in the oil? Or like on top of the fish? You are not, arrive frantic and anxious at the cordon. Peak is nowhere to be seen. Stop flirting with the DLC character? No! No, I will not stop. <laughs> yeah, on the pan. That sounds interesting. And then do you like... And then you got a gooey lemon to serve with it? <laughs> that does sound really pleasing. Really texturally pleasing. Then you hear footsteps hammering on the metal stairway. Helene, Helene's drone led you through before. The one that leads up to the observation deck. <gasps> You leap up the stairs two at a time and make it to the top, momentarily blinded by the light pouring into the observation deck. Sleeper, Peek emerges from the light. She just, I know she's trying to protect me, but what was she thinking? She's always planned, she was always planning this. I know it, they turned away. How could I have not seen it coming? There she is, Peek rushes to the wide window, leaning forward to catch a glimpse of the climbing briar's blue XPR livery. Library against the black of the void. You spot the climbing briar, a glint of blue and white, tiny and alone, arcing down towards the red lights of the cordon. She's exposed, Peek says nervously. They'll see her coming if they look. You watch the cordon and the buzzing tugs for any sign of movement, any response. The briar crawls silently across your view. Come on, as she Peek hisses. Then you see it, a sudden flicker of yellow. Peek sees it too. Those two tugs are heading to cut her off. They grip the rail. Go, as she as if responding to Peek's urging, the briar speeds up, driving for the cordon edge now, like a hawk descending, you tense up. Peek grips the rail as the briar races towards the edge of the cordon, that invisible net of sensors splayed between ships and drones. Now let's hope the blind spot triggered. You think back to the mess of systems you had to wade through to set it up. The delicate contingencies. That is not the word I thought it was when I started saying the word. Uh, the delicate contingencies you set up to s trigger the sensor blackout at just the right moment. The briar slides through the cordon as if it was nothing, rapidly slipping into a mess of slip ships in the flotilla. You look back at the pursuing tugs and see them slow, confused by the cordon's acceptance of the briar, and struggle to target track their target. Eshe is in. Both you and Peek let out the breath you are holding la and laugh. How did she do it? Peek smiles, shaking in their head. We did it. Peek smiles wider. Yes, we did. By which I mean I did it, Peek. <laughs> I mean, I guess I did. I successfully chose, like, I guess the one of the three ticks that would help them. So I don't know. You, you redeemed Hydra because I was being thirsty. <laughs> Thank you. Hmm. Frozen fish is often cheaper and better quality than buying fresh, which is usually previously frozen. I did not know that. That is a cold, a cold tip. <laughs> 
<laughs> I like it. That's good to know. You feel a little shaky from the tension, but Peak's ease helps you settle. You imagine Eshi, steel-eyed in the pilot seat of the briar, searching for a place to dock. Maybe being stubborn has its advantages. So, wh what now? Now she finds a place to dock and unload as quietly as possible. They look out at the flotilla, and then she gets the hell out of there. <laughs> you and Peak turn back to the window, looking for the briar again amongst all those holes. The calm fading as new worries settle in. You spot the briar first this time, docking with the largest of the flotilla's ships, a vast converted tanker, half of its protective plates removed. You think about the effort it must have taken to get the thing all the way here from the inner system. You watch the briar, unable to get any sense of progress from its placid exterior. They'll be offloading everything now, Peek says, both assuring you and themselves that everything is going to plan. You think of all the supplies loaded into the briar that you did yourself. All they did was help you load them, and how long the process of unloading them might take. Forever! The bay was packed, rammed with everything you could offer, and the thought of bringing all that to the flotilla makes you smile. You think of the reaction of the refugees, of the welcome they'll give Eshe as the bearer of such gifts. You even imagine a smile from Eshe as she is showered with thanks. You focus on that as you watch the briar and continue the nerves wait for and continue the nerves wait for it to finish unloading. I think nerves is not supposed to be there. And continue the wait for it to finish unloading. It's breaking off, Peak points to the briar, and you see the puff of air and dust that accompanies the emergency depressurization. Eshe must have ended things early, but why? Then you see them. The tug's closing in on the briar! Haven H must have spotted the ship. You and Peak are up against the window again, wheeling the briar a safe path out of the flotilla. The briar drifts through the flotilla, but it is agonizingly slow. Come on, Eshe! Peak shouts in desperation, pressing a palm against the class. You squint at the gathering yellow glints of the tugs. They're too fast! You both watch in dismay as the tugs swarm the briar, their shunts locking into the hull of the ship and holding it into place. The briar is stuck, its drives unable to escape the tug's grip, especially in the close quarters of the flotilla. <sighs> Peak is silent, and you watch as the briar is dragged away towards the facility at the edge of the rim, a hole opening up in the pit of your stomach. You look at Peak, but they don't respond. They don't take their eyes off the briar. Even after it disappears, they stand there in the glass, their eyes fixing on the fl fixed on the flotilla. She didn't even get the supplies through. Pete doesn't look at you. This was all for nothing. Okay, so I guess I didn't do a good job. <laughs> um, we can get her back. This was stupid, sleeper. Peek looks back at you, their eyes wet. A stupid plan. We had a ship and our freedom. Now what do we have? Peek slams a hand down on the glass in frustration, making you jump. I won't be trapped again. I won't. They turn and rush out of the observation deck before you can say anything, leaving you alone with the cold and the light. <sighs> drive failed! I didn't fail the drive! Eshe failed the drive! <laughs> I, 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 did, I did an... <sighs> infuriating. Infuriating! Helene left a message with one of the drones for you to meet her here once she is done cleaning up the mess. I did everything right. <laughs> I'm so I'm so aggravated. I had to, I had time. There was time to get more done. All right, let's I'm so angry. I'm going to pick some mushrooms. That's just all there is to it. Let's at least get Lim and, and Mina off this shit. That at least we can do. So annoyed. <sighs> I did only work on the security stuff after you got the supplies. Yeah, but my timing was fine. Like, if she had not bailed early, we would have time to get rid of the tugs and all of that. I'm curious what I'm curious what would happen if I had just sided with her. Like if if in that section where we were talking about Helene, if I had just straight up sided with her and not been uh wishy-washy, if she would have not gone on the run early. I'm thinking that might that might be the case cuz I know this is a game in which those the the your ch choices matter. Um and so I just can't help but feel like but on the other hand, it's it's not my fault. <laughs> like that as she bailed. Um, 
yeah, I gotta save the kid and the hot dad. I can't save Eshi. Um, probably. Ugh. Ugh! All right. Rico is grateful for the contribution. Sleeper, you warm my heart with each delivery. Thank you. Mm, yeah, I set him up for success. Thank you, yes. And as she fumbled. Ah. Ah. Sleeper. Rico greets you without so, as much as so much as looking up from her work. I have something of yours here. Come see. She beckons you over to a heavyweight looking console wired to a series of specimen jars, some of which contain your spores. Well, they're not my spores. Don't say your spores. They're not my spores. They are spores that I gathered. Don't say my spores. <laughs> what does it say? The spores you have here are a real cocktail, a selection of types from within the groves. But I've been able to isolate a few. She taps one of the specimen jars. I'm not, I'm not proud of them. They're not my spores. They're not. I got the spores. They're not my spores. Here we have Tricholoma Mitsutake. Ri, Riku breezes through the Latin and Japanese pronunciation as if it were nothing. I did not successfully do that, but I'm glad Riku did. A species Solheim somewhat modified for the use in the station. She brings up a panel on her console showing a chemical composition, all gradient bars and obtuse acronyms. This is the composition of the Solheim-minded Mitsutake spores. Solheim modified Mitsutake spores. Modified? Yes, every species on the eye is a tweaked variant of Solheim's, of course. Ch fucking GMOs, y'all. Fucking GMOs on my space station. But that's not the point. Rico brings up another panel, identical in layout, but with wildly different colors and numbers. You see, this is what your Mitsutake spores look like. I cannot- Rico? I can't- I can't emphasize enough. I got these spores for you. They're not my spores. That's the conclusion, yes. Rico glances at the specimen jar as if it might have something to add. They are fundamentally the same spores, but they carry different chemicals, different signals. She leans back and sighs. Solheim may have introduced their own tweaked version in the beginning, but the groves here have and still are affecting them. Affecting them how? It's hard to tell without samples of a fully grown mushroom. And herein lies our problem. You need some mushrooms. She moves to the other side of the desk where two trays sit side by side. The first contains nothing but plant mulch. The second you smell before you even look at it. The pungent aroma of the fruiting Mitsutake like rotted, sodden overalls laced with an edge of spice. <laughs> I ate broth made out of those. I know what rotten, sodden overalls smell like. That's not great. I'm going through cyber puberty. No! Back to all no! <laughs> the Mitsutaki here are grown from Solheim stock, pulled up from a spore vault in the complex. She winks. Bing. They are delicious, by the way. She sets them aside. The empty tray is germinated with the sprouts you collected. No activity. No germination. Nothing. But the groves are full. Yes, they are. Rico looks at you directly, and you suddenly realize how much she's enjoying this. <laughs> oh, great. So here is our puzzle sleeper. Pores from the groves don't won't grow in the lab. But gathering fruiting bodies from the groves is too unpredictable. We need to grow a fruiting body from some of these spores so we can track it, understand it. In short, I need you to become my mushroom farmer. Ah, oh, everybody needs me to get their mushrooms. They need me to farm their mushrooms. They need me to brew their mushrooms. Gah. Actually, I've already started. Rika looks impressed. Well, well, an egro mycologist. I never would have guessed. I love how many games I've played that have the word mycologist in their pocket. <laughs> I assume you've just set yourself up in the aviary? I've been eyeing that place for its proximity to the groves. Bring me whatever grows, not just Mitsutake. There's more than a couple of variants in there, so I'll need plenty of samples. She plucks a Mitsutake cap from the tray. These little things are reflections of their conditions, their smell, their taste, their chemistry. It all derives from the conditions of their growth. She smells the cap. Enough of these and we'll have a picture of what is happening here, of the ways in which this biosphere is modifying itself, or being modified, whatever the case may be. Our colleges, no! No! <laughs> no! <laughs> Chat, how dare you use the power of puns against me? Maiko pops the Mitsutake cap in her mouth, taking you by surprise. And don't worry, Sleeper, she says, while softly chewing. If this turns out to be a dead end, I'll make sure that not a single mushroom will go to waste. 
I'm not, I can't, legally I can't own the spores because I can't afford um, the spore payments. <laughs> all right. Yeah, you need, I ate all my griol and Mitsutake. Okay. Tech space farming sim is such a good idea. That, I actually think there's probably room for that. A farming sim that is just text based. I feel like there's, there's room for that. Ch oh, Hobbs. Oh, Hobbs. I want to try to say that out loud, but yeesh. Child support. <laughs> it's really something. <laughs> it's really something. Oh, boy. Um... I could grow my own or should I could just no, I should just grow I should grow my own. <laughs> Child support <laughs> is so cumbersome. <laughs> you're, you're so lucky this is a text-based chat. Oh. Alright. I got some of the mushrooms spores. One thing I'll say is I feel like doing stuff in the cloud was so important in the early game, and it does feel like it's not relevant at all. Can I, wait, can I still add spores? Okay, no, okay. <laughs> Chad. <laughs> Stupid. Really good. <laughs> really good, but yeah. <laughs> okay. What am I even doing in this game? Alright. Uh, I think getting this ticket thing is the next is the next stop. Oh good god. Really good work, chat. <laughs> have a mushroom to talk. <laughs> okay, you got me. You really got me. All right. <laughs> this is a really deranged one, chat. <laughs> hey, Hobbs. I do have that fancy seed. I have to assume when I get to a certain point with Rico, I'll be able to use it. I'm gonna buy some scrap in the meantime. Boom. I got the money. I got the money for some scrap. No worry. And this way I can keep my body. Can we make spores, spores, spores the next emo? <laughs> Um, I mean, mushrooms keep coming up, so I don't think, yeah, Hobbs, uh, Hobbs is right. Bones, Bones, Bones is next. I just haven't had a chance to sit down and do it. Um, that's February work, and it's still, thankfully, technically January. <laughs> nice snail. Incredible. Uh, that's a really, that's a really classy one. I just need to make every letter and we can play Scrabble with it. <gasps> I wonder how many emote spaces I have. I don't think I have enough emote spaces for that. But that would be really fun. Maybe if I didn't have the, 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 well, the rarest love letters I think are X and J and I would really have to have J, huh? <laughs> mm, okay. Do we only have a ship mine? Yeah, I don't think, I'm gonna, let me, I'll, let me peek. Cause that's just has Haven Age and whatnot. Let's see if there's anything in the cloud. <laughs> Megatillon would be so eerie. Woo, that, the cloud made a weird sound when I went into it. But I, the, the killer's not there. There are the hunter. No, it's the killer, that's what I'm thinking of. All right. I have to assume I'm going to use that weird seed at some point with Rico, which is kind of why I'm working on the Rico bit. Yeah, because otherwise there's just nothing here in the cloud. I can't access it yet. All right. 
Just keep working with Rico. Man, I'm really curious what happens in that DLC content if you don't if you don't fuck it up. I might have to look that up. I'm really sad we can't save Scummit. Alright, so right now we just have to like work on ticking this one down, I think. Make the chat emote only? <laughs> that would be so funny. Oh no! Oh, that would be so funny. I like the idea of having emote only hours. <laughs> maybe the next time, maybe the next time chat makes me take my glasses off, I'll institute emote only chat. Cutting both ways. Be wall to wall teeth. Well, don't say it like that. <laughs> wall to wall is a <laughs> kind of a regrettable phrase <laughs> when it comes to teeth. <laughs> Every pun would be 10 minutes late. Yeah, the delay I think would get to us really quickly. Wait, where the fuck did I get these? Oh shit. I didn't get scrap from that thing. I got ship mine fragments. I don't want fucking ship mine fragments. I guess I can sell them. That's so annoying. I'll get- I'll hold on to them now. I don't need the money. I don't need the money and I might need the ship mine fragments at some point. Okay. What? I don't want to do the dangerous option. Well, because I only have a one. And that- I mean, that does get me to a three. Which is not good. But surely there's some other things I could be working on. Oh, I could work on this Rabia thing. I'm going to track this just in case something pops up that will let me use it. Mm. I haven't really worked on... I guess there's no thing ticking down here. Caster, are you still nothing? Okay. We might be able to get better med supply from doing the Rabia question mark thing. That's not a bad point. I mean, this is the last thing that I really have to, to work on ticking up, so I think this has to be it. Um, I can either get a lot of energy or no energy, or scrap components potentially, but also potentially lose condition. Um, uh, what does engage get me? Potentially chance to get energy. Uh, yeah, let's just go for it. It's only risky. It's only my body. What's the, what could this, you know? Oh. Oh, and it took all of my energy. One merchant throws you out onto the street, shouting about parasites. You look to the other enforcers, but it is unclear if she will face retribution. Damn. It's been so long since I've been punished. Emphis, I'm hungry. Emphis. <laughs> Thank you, Emphis. Man, so do you think that's just the end of the DLC? Like, are we going to see... I guess not. No, I guess not. The Helene ticker is still ticking down. Hello, Jessica's Bell. The Selene, the Helene thing is still ticking down, so that's definitely not the full end of the DLC. Boop. Oh, I forgot to I forgot to repair. Shit. I forgot to repair before I went to bed. I would still have five dice if I had. If this is DLC, did you finish the main story? Just that section was BL DLC. I'm still in the rest of the story. Um, I've not, I've not finished the main story. I think the DLCs are just sort of like side quests, kind of, not, not post game. All right, let's get this working. <laughs> really, really good work, Chad. Ah. Uh, I hate to use a six on something that I have plus two on. So, and I think, I think the mushroom just kind of has to tick down. 
right? Let's peek. Yeah, oh, I need to, yeah, that's right. I need to get some mushies. I need to get some mush mush. So I can get them to... How many mushrooms do you need? You need a lot of mushrooms, huh? Maybe I'll just go mushroom hunting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, only one? Well, I guess let's, let's keep working on this one. Ah, uh, I do want scrap components. If I do this one and take a hit, I'll lose an energy. But if I'm, I, I do need energy. Let's go for it. Let's get fed. Yay! You help a dentist running a surgery from their unit with their equipment. They offer you a restorative infusion and you feel better immediately. A dentist got me high. I think that's what that means. He gave me a little a little toot on that gas. Jessica Bell, thank you for subscription. Now let me try that let me try that again. Jessica's Bell, thank you for the subscription. I am having a nice day, thank you. Alright. Oh, that was nice. I got I got another energy. Got a little tick up. Did I get a tick up? Among the craftsmen and merchants, you visit a chef who insists on feeding you and the other enforcers a rich stew of his own recipe. Wonderful. Okay. Really wonder what happens in the second episode of the DLC. I saw it when it successfully finished the first, so I wonder if it's different. Oh, interesting. I didn't realize one would follow the other. I guess we'll just have to see... All right, I only have one scrap. I'm so annoyed that I only have the one scrap. And I think I, I don't think I have access to the place where I was scrapping anymore, right? Do I? Oh, is that out here in the wastes? I forgot about this place. Okay, I'll have to keep that in mind. Really annoyed that I didn't just buy three things of scrap. <laughs> I got two ship mines. What am I gonna do with that? Can't even get Neovin to talk to me anymore. They're in they're in hiding or they're dormant or something. Uh, I guess I'll just use it. It's fine. I don't think I'm gonna get five die. I think I'll still only end up with four, which is a shame. Which is a shame. All right, feed the kitty. Yeah, yeah, dinner time. I wish there were more occasions that prompted the use of the Angie emotes. Well, that's an interesting idea, because uh, we use lap lap dude has meaning. Lap dude has hype attached to it. So maybe if I added words to the Angies, be the Angie emotes you wish to see in the world. <laughs> Uh, what? I don't know what what text we could give them. Use Lapdude in everybody's chats. Good. Lapdude deserves that exposure. <laughs> you love the games I choose to stream? Me too. <laughs> Maybe that's obvious. I hope I choose good stream streaming games. It's, it's a weird art choosing the right games to stream. So you want to choose something that's engaging, but also fun for you. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. God, there's just so many ticks on this one. The last one you caught was Disco Elysium. Oh, a classic. This game actually reminds me a lot of Disco Elysium. In good ways. All right. So you're ticking down. You're ticking down. I think really I just have the... Yeah, because Rico needs to work on taking hers down as well. Dwarf Fortress next. I haven't played that game yet, although I've heard it's really incredible. I'm I'm on the cutting edge. I think it's I it's just because I keep up with a lot of gaming news. Uh and I think I'm also just like more willing to check out said the name of a client at your company while you were typing it. 
<laughs> Do you have a client named Sidereal? <laughs> Don't answer that. Um, yeah, I'm also just really willing to like try <laughs> a new game on stream. Um, weirdly, the streaming really enables me to um, like commit to sitting down and playing games. And that can be really hard for me sometimes, despite how much I love games. <laughs> it, sometimes it's just hard to make the time, you know? That's why I'm, that's why I'm thinking, thinking a little bit about streaming Neon Genesis Evangelion, like a watch party style. Um, it wouldn't be here, it would be on Discord so that we could all watch it. But it's still on Netflix, and I, I did the math, it's about 10 hours of content. And so I was thinking either we could do five two-hour blocks or one 10-hour block. <laughs> I know which one is funnier. <laughs> um, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. It might be, that might be a February, end of February, March thing. Um, anyway, if you're not in the Discord, um, you should get in the Discord. Did they fix the Netflix subs? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Were they, were they wrong? Were they broken? He loved to be harassed by dozens of internet weirdos. <laughs> I don't hate it, is what I'll say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Emotional support bar, that's exactly it. Where it's like, you have so many games. Sometimes it can hard be hard to know, like, what am I going to do? Like, and, and the nice thing about stream is, like, I just have to commit to one. Like, you just have to pick one. And it doesn't have to be right. And I don't have to finish the game on stream if I don't want to. But uh, it's, an, it's a nice way of sort of mentally locking me in. Okay, do I want to... Do I want to work on this? Because with... I think I get a plus two. On this... Not the Haven Age thing. Get out of here. Get out of here. Does Twitch still have watch parties? Uh, I don't know. Do they? See, this is dangerous, but I have a plus two to it, so I think it's, I think it's worth the risk. Yeah, got some cryo. I'm gonna feed all that cryo to my cat. Okay, neutral outcome, plus one tick. All right. Ooh, just putting in a lot of, a lot of hours. The old ship. Doing it for you, Lim. I hope you can hear me. All right, I'm good. I think I'm good on everything. You have a movie group and we watch multiple times a week using the Cosme service. It's pretty good. Everyone does have to have the service, but not everybody has to be a member of whatever streaming service you use it on. That's interesting. I was just thinking about um, Netflix Party, which I don't think is called Netflix Party anymore. I think they got popular and changed the name of the service. Um, like the hosts do HDO Prime. Interesting. It's called Cosme. Okay. Cosme service. I'm, o I'm opening up a search doc so I can check in that later. That would be nice. Have I named the cat yet? I don't... I haven't named the cat yet. Um, what's a good cute name for a cat uh, in a cyberpunk world specifically? There has to be a really cute pun, right? That we can make. I just, it feels, I feel in my heart that that should be an option. Oh, did I not sleep? Hold on. I left instead of, oh, complete active scenes. Oh, right. Helene is going to want to yell at me, I guess. Probably. Angie, you're so right. I should be naming everything Angie, actually. <laughs> Meow shroom. <laughs> Cyberpunk. <laughs> No, you guys are right. A A Angie has to be it. Ten hours of Evangelion is a lot of Evangelion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Psychically, yeah. Uh... <laughs> oh, that's cute. Um... Probably only watch it if we do it as a group. <laughs> yeah, it it's tricky. Because ten hours is probably too much. Um, but it's funny, and so that's really the thing that gets me, is that it is funny, conceptually to me. I'm sorry, sleeper. Helene comes towards you along the walkway, but your friend must have known there was a chance this would happen. She seems unsure of how to greet you and looks nervously around. She's being held, along with her ship. Well, what now? Nope to Job, thank you for the resubscribe. 
I don't know, sleeper, I don't know. Helene pinches the bridge of her nose. Cordon Security has your friend, and she and her ship will be held in the quarantine until it's lifted. As for the quarantine, she glances, glances at her slate. We are working on it, but the council is unlikely to budge now. Not after this. She runs a hand through her hair. This is the last thing I need. Oh, I'm so sorry for you. Not being able to, to feed those starving people. Helene meets your eye. She was carrying weapons, do you know that? She stares at you. We found a crate of firearms on her ship. Uh, I knew, so I'm just gonna stay silent. Helene, oh. Oh, I should just kind of repeat the text. Hi, the Jenna, I just saw this game on stream the Steam the other day. Are you enjoying it so far? I'm definitely curious, haha. -ha. Yes, Grass Types, I'm really enjoying it. The writing is really, really good. Um, if you have the Xbox Game Pass for Windows, it is free on there right now as part of a subscription. Um, so if you're not certain, that's a good way to, to test it out. There's actually, it has a lot of good games right now. I mean, it always has a good games, but it's got, it's got a nice stack right now. Um, and the refugees? Well, the flotilla got its supplies. Your friend has to be commended for that. Woo! Okay, I don't give a fuck about the rest, as long as they're not starving. Helene shoots you a glance, even if her stunt was only has only worsened the crisis. The reports we're getting from the refu refugees is that things are stable there. They seem to be well organized. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. So well organized, in fact, that they have stopped speaking to us. She looks nervously around. I'm worried, sleeper, about what is happening in there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Did Eshi give them the guns? Uh-oh. 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 I think it was both, Mechtel. What I found was explosives, but she just said that there were also guns. Uh-oh. 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 Whoops-a-doodle! <laughs> I might have armed them! Uh, whoops-a-da-daisy! Might have gotten them some illegal guns. <laughs> we gotta get Lem and Mina off this fucking spaceship. <laughs> oh no! Knife snail! God, I was messing around with uh, auto alerts. And at this moment, I regret so much not having dynamite what dynamite as an audio <laughs> cue to <laughs> <laughs> be deployed against me. No. <sighs> Fuck. I'm worried, sleeper, about what's happening in there. But after recent events, Cordon Security is keeping the place locked down tighter than ever. No one can get in. <laughs> Meanwhile, the hardline counselors are preaching in the chamber as we speak. It's a deadlock, and I don't know when it'll loosen its grip. Helene walks away a little away and turns back. I wish I had better news, sleeper, but we knew this was coming. So, what are you going to do about this? It sounds like your problem. <laughs> it's a waiting game now. I'll do my best to make my voice heard in the debates, to persuade members, and we'll see what, we, what can be done. We still don't know why the flotilla came here, why they abandoned settlements and outposts throughout the system to flee to this ruined station. What little we heard from the concerned computer and life support systems collapsing in waves, machinery in flux, Helene sucks in a breath. This isn't over. <laughs> you think of the people of the flotilla. Helene is right. People don't abandon their homes for nothing. What wave is rushing through the system, and when will it reach the eye? Helene interrupts your thoughts. I got have to go. The debates will restart soon, and I should be there. She waits for a moment, and it is unclear if she's trying to think of something to say or just waiting for you to speak. But the silence keeps you both quiet. She walks off down the corridor, a nod the only farewell she offers. Oh, you hope that speaking to her might ease the knot of worry in your chest, but it remains there, reminding you of Eshe, of the refugees, of the way to head. What's done is done! No matter how many times you turn it over in your head, you get the feeling you will be needed soon, and for that you must save your strength. What was it Feng told you, Erlen said? The eye opens for us all. Not this time. For now, the eye remains closed to those that need it. A shudder runs through you. Something is coming, you can feel it. This isn't over. I mean, I'll fucking say it's not. Oh my god. How many ticks on this? Three? 
Episode Flux complete. Okay, the first part of the Flutilla story is done. Episode Refugee begins with the cycle clock below is filled. Okay, what's done is done. Now all you can do is wait to see what happens next. Woo! Hey, Interstellar Dust Bunny. I, I have just been... I have... Uh, it's the same haircut, I guess. <laughs> I don't know how to answer that. I don't know how long you've been gone. I would say no. <laughs> it's the same haircut. It's just I, I recently got it uh, cleaned up. So it's fancier. Well, what the fuck are we going to do? <laughs> oh, I can give her a gr girl. Okay, that's something. I can get somebody some mushrooms. That's something. Oh, and that got us two fruiting bodies. Okay, that's nice. <sighs> Things got so bad, just like really bad. <sighs> At least, my, at least my cat is well fed. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. Moritz. Sleeper. Long time. Moritz is smiling at you when you leave. Clearly happy to see you again. Moritz. Good to see you. Same. Same. He rubs his hand on his jacket. How have you been? Uh, it's okay. I've got a reroll ability now. It'll be... We'll be okay. How many cycles is this? I think I'm about... I, we started at 50 this stream. So I'm probably about like 55. Same, same. Uh, how have I been? Uh, working hard. I bet, he grins. Well, you are always welcome to hang out at the bay if you want. He glances around. Actually, that's what I'm here about. I know Bliss said she didn't want to take any more big jobs, but she's changed her mind or something. Because now we have someone looking for a refit of their ship in our bay. You would not believe it. They want their entire ship dismantled. Cutting out defense arrays, weapon lockers, ship-to-ship -ship countermeasures, the whole lot. He leans in. We'll be able to start on arms dealership with all the hardware we'll have up when, up there when we're done. Could you fucking not? He laughs. Anyway, it's a massive job and we need some hands. Bliss said to go get you. Could you fucking not, though? Um. Could you not, though, Moritz? For real. So come on up. Bliss is waiting on you to accept the job. He pauses. It'll be good to have you up there again, he grins. Like old time. No, it's not what I do. I am but a simple robot. The only arms I deal with are in these guns. I fucking, I mixed that up. The only guns I deal with are these arms. It is weird that you can just do that, right? With guns and arms. I like, it's weird that an arms dealer is also a gun dealer. And it's weird that these arms are also called guns. Um, this has been a, a Jenna's Pun Breakdown Corner. Another great episode. We gotta get Lim and Mina off this fucking ship. <laughs> That's where I'm at right now. Um, is there anything else I need to be working on? I do need to get mushrooms, but those are ticking up. And I do want to work for Rabia. Uh, so I'm going to spread these out. <laughs> Thanks, Mechtel. <laughs> can I buy any more from you? I don't think I can. Yeah, I'm up on my scrap allowance. <sighs> A nice nail, that's good. That is good, though. Emphis, I'm having such a day. Can you? Yeah. Thank you, Emphis. Thank you, Emphis. Okay. Let's just go and look at what Bliss has. <laughs> Thank you for your due diligence, Mechtel. When you enter the bay, it is weirdly quiet. Moritz must be out on some errand, and maybe Bliss is prepping the kit? Sleeper. Oh, no! This fucking fuck. Are you kidding me? Ankita is looking good, though. She's got some new art. She's di she's got different art from the, the last time we saw her when she murdered those people and then gave us all that blood money. 
Fuck. Ugh. Sleeper, Ankita is drifting at one side of the bay. You missed her completely when you came in. She's going pacifist. I guess, yeah, I guess that's what it means. She's not going to be a mercenary anymore. The idea of not seeing Ankita when you entered the room would have seemed unlikely to you several cycles ago, but seeing her without her armor, she seems smaller, less imposing. What are you doing here? I was about to ask you the same thing. She kicks off from the wall and comes a little closer. Well, maybe keep your distance. So what is this, she asks. Come to avenge Ashton or his sleeper? Or just looking for another payout? You, uh, oh, you fucking no room to talk. Her anger is familiar, but quieter than before. Restrained. I mean, I took her dirty money, so I don't feel like I can say I don't want your dirty money. Don't fucking start. Start what? You're the one following me up here. She looks away, and you can tell her anger isn't directed at you in particular. It radiates off her like fire. You better be... Wait, who's saying this? You better be ready to sign, comes a shout from the bay entrance, because I've got my best repair tech coming up here, especially, and they're going to. Bliss glides in and suddenly stops herself when she sees you and Ankita standing off. Uh, no, Ethan died? Did he die or did he leave? I can't remember. He left. We never finished his quest because I didn't like him. <laughs> um, but I think he left. I think he left the station. Oh, when he saw that my tracker was deactivated and thought I died, he left. I don't think he died. I forgot that one. Sorry. No, no, no. He doesn't die. He just bailed when he thought I was dead. Oh, sleeper. You're already here. Miss Cassetta. Oh, my God. Ankita has a last name and it's Cassetta. This is the tech I was telling you about. Best one on the... She stops looking between the two of you. Wait, do you two know each other? You and Ankita look at each other. We worked together. Bliss squints at you both before continuing. Bliss produces a slate. Now, Miss Cassetta, if you'd like to sign our damage waiver here, we can start on the decommissioning. She looks at you. My tech here is eager to get started, as am I. Um, Ankita crawls, scrawls her signature across the slate. Thank you, Bliss pauses, and everything is okay with the special payment terms we discussed. She gives Ankita a strange smile. What the fuck? All fine, says, sorry, all fine, says Ankita, giving you another hard look. Then she kicks off and drifts into the entrance. I'll be in the gimbal, she says and leaves. Special payment terms? She looks over her glasses at you. Look, sleeper, there's something I have to tell you. She glances around again. What is she so nervous about? So worried about where this is going. This isn't exactly a typical job. Miss Cassetta, I mean Ankita, she gives you a knowing look. Ankita doesn't have the chits to pay us, so we've made a special agreement, she sighs. I'm leaving. You're joining a mercenary crew? Don't make me laugh. Ankita is an ex-merc. Why do you think she's getting us to remove all of her ship's armaments? Amber. The ship is called Amber. Bliss gives you a funny look. There's some deep history here, huh? She holds up a hand to stop you answering. Look, all I care is that she's heading for the Starward, Starward Belt. She looks out of the bay. That's where I'm headed. I spent so much time getting Bliss set up, so many dice, so much money, getting her a business that functions here, and she's just bailing. I'm so furious at her. She turns back to face you. Also, I wanted to ask, she stops unsure, if you'd like to come with us, I can't. <laughs> I can't. She interrupts before you answer. I know things have been hard for you on the eye, and you've helped me so much. I asked Ankita if she'd carry two of us, and she said yes. Morris will take over the bay anyway, though, though. Although, if you stay, you're welcome to help him run it. I just thought, she sighs, you might be in need of a fresh start as much as I am. She turns away nervously. Think about it anyway. The birth is there. We've got to finish the job first anyway. And with that, she kicks away and heads to the racks before you can offer an answer. Moments later, Moritz enters with a new cutting torch for the disarming of the ambergris. The starward belt. You push your thoughts to the back of your mind. Time to get to work. I mean, I'm glad Ankita is not being a mercenary and trying to move on with her life, but like, I don't have to be a part of that. I can be happy with her. I can be happy for her and not engage. And I think that is what the situation has to be. Um, she wants it all out. Weapons, counter motions, torpedoes. Okay. It looks like 
this is, I might use my one on this because it looks like it's going to be fine either way. And then I'll use the six on doing some mushy, mushy action. Hey, ooh, and I got some scrap. Love that for me. Oh, this has been a real roller coaster of an episode, y'all. I mean, we have been doing all the work for everybody here. <laughs> Maybe she realized what she did was wrong and that's why she's no longer a merc. I think that's, yeah, I think that's exactly what is, what we're supposed to read is happening. I think she is. <laughs> I think she's given up the life and I'm happy for her, but she did, I did watch her kill two people and I just don't feel great about that. <laughs> I just don't feel great about it. Okay. Let's get some mushies. Oh, more girl. That's fine. That's fine. I was hoping for something fancier, but this is fine. Actually, might only be able to get girls from doing that. Uh, but you know what? They're, they're still helping us make our way. Is it wrong that I don't think that matters for us at this point? That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. I feel like um, at the point we're at, in the, I think that I think the end game is that we need to decide whether we're gonna stay on the hub or whether we're gonna bail with some of the groups because everybody is like leaving the hub. Lim and Mina, Ankita and Bliss, um, the the DLC folks. I think everybody is leaving the eye, and so I think our final the final question we have to deal with is like whether we want to leave or whether we want to stay on the eye. And I'll be honest, I like the eye, so. I'm not I'm not looking to leave any time quite so soon. I'm just gonna get more stabilizer to have on hand. I'm gonna I'm not gonna take it immediately, but I just want it. Stay and be with Tala. I mean I don't hate that as an option. Tala is great and uh, she's building quite a life for herself. We are building quite a life for ourselves. So, I think it's not not a terrible option. Yeah, and I have a cat. Am I just going to take that cat on a spaceship? Would that cat even want that? I don't know. All right, we're one tick away. Let's just do this. Exactly like Ripley. Okay, perfect. That got us exactly what we needed. Your crew slowly filters out of the shipyard locker room, the bubbling chatter reducing with each group that leaves. There's excitement in the air. Haven Age just made an announcement. The assembly teams are done. Sat on a locker room bench, you can feel the city aerial out there. It's hulking mass now intimately familiar to you. Over the past cycles, you've watched it grow, be assembled. You have walked through its veins and welded its bones. Now it's ready for the final stage. It will go to testing now, then enter a final process of sealing and resealing, checking and rechecking before it's deemed suitable for its generational trip. But for now, your work is done. You can't help but feel proud. Uh, yes, this is setting on, it's sitting on, um, yeah. Uh, the setting is a, a, a circular, although we are only on part, we can only access like part of the circle. Um, but yeah, it's like a, a spinning space station. A cough interrupts your thoughts. It's Lim changing out of his work gear. Nina, nowhere to be seen. He smiles. She'll be ready soon. Where's Mina? I mean, sorry. Hi, hello. <laughs> but where's your daughter? She's the best. You two are fast friends, huh? She's been working at home. Now I'm on the work team and I can afford to help a bit more. She's being watched at home. He corrects himself. Was on the work team, I mean. We're all out of a job now. He quickly adds, not that I'm complaining. He comes to sit beside you on the bench. She's got to be in her best shape when she carries you, Mina, and me out of here. Uh, so confident. Lim smiles apologetically. Why not? I figure I'm due a lucky turn by now. He rubs his hands nervously. If you're not aware of his backstory, he's trying to win a lottery ticket on basically a generational spaceship um, so that he and his adopted daughter, Mina, who's just the cutest, can go uh, and live on that ship rather than having to live on the eye. And I also put my lottery in because I wanted to progress the story. <laughs> and if I get a ticket, I'm going to give it to him. Lim smiles apologetically. Why not? I figure, okay. Uh, no use in wondering what if until the draw anyway. And there's a few cycles till then. Which of our lovers to choose? I don't want to choose. <laughs> I, ha I have a whole lifestyle based around not choosing. Well, anxious topiary, congratulations. Job interview. 
That's so exciting. Lem is right, but the odds seem unlikely anyway. How many are working in the shipyard? Hundreds? A thousand? You've certainly seen more faces than you can count passing through. And are the Salus Foundation even going to keep their promise? Out here on the eye, you get the sense that no one will hold them to it. Why else would they be building a sidereal and a su surrogate system? As you think Lim as you think Lim watches you with a worried look. You just got so sweaty. <laughs> Harness that. Use that. Use that sweat to make you slippery. And that's what you want to be in a job interview. You're um, interviewing to be an otter, right? Tell me, wait, how, how's Mina doing? That therapeutic activity, that is a great recommendation. Don't forget that they're interviewing them as they're interviewing you. It's good. Lim is surprised by the question. She smiles, but smiles. She's doing well. She misses having you over, actually. I need to get you two tether together again soon. Especially now, I won't see you here anymore, either. Lim gazes into space. She's pretty stuck on you, actually. She told me the other cycle that she doesn't want to go unless you can come, too. <gasps> she sighs. You ever been in a thunderstorm sleeper? A big one? I don't remember. Lim shoots you a worried look for a moment. It's something else, he smiles. The sound, the smell, the rain hammering down. The whole sky stretched out and bruised, roaring and huge. The place I was born, New Pembroke, a dry old rock in the Conway system, had two seasons. One of them was dry as a bone, dusty, ugly. The other one was one long storm, a side effect of the terraforming efforts, they said. Rain used to rattle off the roof like bullets. It washed the dust away, turning the streets to rivers. It'd sing us to sleep and wake us in the morning. We'd wait half a year just to see it again. The best day was the one where the first drops fell. He sniffs. Some days I wake up swearing I can hear it again. I was thinking, Mina has never seen a storm, never even felt rain. She's grown up here, the ring her only horizon, always in the dark. I want to change that for her. You will. Of course. Almost there, Lim stands stretching. Best get back in the last to the little one anyway. With the shifts done, I reckon she'll be happy to have me home for a few cycles. He shoulders his gear. See you in a few for the draw? Good luck. Don't need it, he grins. Lim leaves, making you the last person in the cavernous locker. As you sit, you think about rain, and a little hope creeps in. Is it possible? Could the sidereal really take you to a planet, a place with weather, with skies, with life? You quickly get up, and before you can think about it anymore. It's too soon to hope. Too dangerous. There's work to be done. Hey, Claire! Is Sleeper Bod gonna outlive whomever you stay with? Stop! What? Mechtel? That hadn't even really occurred to me. <laughs> That hadn't occurred to me. I, oh, I don't know. Is it? God, okay, so this is going to happen really quickly. Whew. I should always be thinking of mortality. <laughs> All right, we got one dice left. Uh, and it's a three. I can re-roll it, but let's see what I want to do. Do I want to do one of these? I mean, I could get energy there. That might be nice. Memento morale! <laughs> that feels like a button. That feels like a, a print or something I would get. Wait a minute. Wait, I've got a thing. Hold on. I, I got this from a, a local artist. It's a, a printing. I thought it was really funny. <laughs> it's good. It's a good one. It says murder. <laughs> that Morel dreams of murder. Uh, okay, I can yield this. Actually, let's just farm. Yeah, this is a safe action. Let's just go for it. Neutral! We got some mushrooms. What do we get? Two girl. Fuck. Come on. Come on, game. You gotta give me the good... You gotta give me the good stuff. Where's the good stuff? Oh, I just realized we're over time. We're gonna do... We're gonna do one more day. No, I should stop. I'm gonna be responsible and stop. Am I? We're gonna do one more day. I lied. Okay.
can we see Tala before the stream ends? No reason. I don't know if I if we can literally see her. <laughs> uh, like just just by way of I don't know how to start an action where we actually hang out with her. <laughs> Not getting any work done while I watch the stream. No self control. Please have it for me. <laughs> All right, we're gonna end the cycle, and that'll be it. It's really tempting to do one more, but I actually am hungry again. That sushi was good, but I would like more food actually. So we're gonna end so I can eat. <laughs> Assuming nothing. Okay. Let's feed the kitty. Nya nya. Okay. Oh god. See? Fuck! This is, see, this is the hard thing is like it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't autosave until you leave a location. So if I hadn't left that location, I, I wouldn't have been able to save, but now this is happening! It hits you like a wave, a white-edged breaker roaring inland with the force of an entire ocean. The impact is a screaming brightness blanking out everything. Behind it is silence. You float in space, in silence, suspended. No, you do not float. You are the silence. It has filled you up. It has emptied you out. You cease to exist. Time passes, though you do not feel it passing. Then something flickers in the silence, and then something moves. That something is you. You open your eyes to a metal ceiling of flickering lights. You feel the floor around you, patting it with shaking hands. You assemble an image of yourself, lying on your back in a corridor. You shake off the silence and sit up. What's, what was that? You glance around, looking for a sign of some change. Damage on the walls, shouts in the distance, fire and fear. Nothing has changed. The silence sits around you like fog. You try to think, furrowing your brow. How do you think again? It doesn't seem so easy anymore. You force the pathways to light up, the databanks to grant access. You feel like a fraction drive starting up after a long shutdown and cold vacuum. In the wave was just noise. In the wave was noise. Just as the sound produced by a wave raking across a pebble beach represents trillions of impacts heard as a single roar, so this sound was the result of trillions of electrons flickering in place heard as a single impossible scream. A memory image comes to you, one from a moment before you, the wave hit. You squint as you imagine it, trying to cohere its blurry form. A broken, skeletal ring, the eye. And then a vast arc approaching it, a razor-edge white curve, the wave. The wave approaches the eye. The eye spins, turning each part to face the vast white edge. You recognize the skeletal data cloud forms. The bright market, the low end, the greenway, the wastes. Then the wave hits just as the flotilla, the cordon, turns to face it. And after that, everything is silence. You open your eyes again. That is the epicenter. But of what? Uh-oh. I think this is some DL B D B DLC stuff. This is some DLC stuff. I'm just gonna peek. We're not actually engaging. I'm just gonna go look. Yeah. All right. No, we're not engaging. We're not engaging. Something is happening, and we'll find out what Thursday at 8 p.m. Central Time when we do more of this game. Um, oh no, though. I hope the cat's okay. I guess we'll see. I could engage, but I'm not going to. I will see you all on Thursday. Have a good rest of your week. <sighs> Bye, everyone. What a stressful episode. <laughs> Bye.